All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back in Code Fight's almost increasing sequence of the intro. So the objective here is we are given an array, and we need to find out if all the values are increasing by one sequentially, or increasing in order. So a one, and then is it greater than one, and then the next number, is it greater than that number, so on and so forth. But it's almost increasing, meaning that we can have one screw up where one number is less than and can still return true. And that that's essentially the goal is, hey, is it almost an increasing sequence? Meaning, are they all going upwards from there? So you'll see in our example here, we have one, three, two, one. This is false because this is increasing then this is decreasing, then this is decreasing, so it's decreasing twice, which means it's false. While this is true, where it's increasing, then decreasing, so it only decreases once, thus it is true. So how do we how do we get started? Well, we need to keep track of how many times it's decreasing, so we're gonna create this count variable, set it equal to zero, and and what we're gonna do in our return statement is we're just gonna return count less than or equal to one. So what this is gonna do is it's going to evaluate the value of count, and if it's less than or equal to one, it's going to return true, or if it's greater than, or great, if it's greater than one, it's going to return false. So we're gonna do that with our return statement. That's the easy part, right? So how do we how do we start figuring out our logic? Well, let's create a for loop here because uh, we know we have to iterate through the entire array. Let's zoom in a little bit, and we're saying while i is less than the length of the array, i plus plus. All right, so we're gonna iterate through the first array. Now, the first thing that we would do is an if statement, and this is where I got stuck for quite a bit. So it, it was pretty apparent, like, okay, well, all I have to do is check that the number in front of it is, if it's less than the number behind it. So if, if index zero, or if index one is less than index zero, well, we need to add one to count. And I was thinking, okay, well, that would be all I would need to do and we're, we're good to go. Uh, so let's go ahead and get that first piece of logic in there and then I'll explain to you why it doesn't pass all the tests. So we're checking the current index we're checking. If it's less than the previous index we checked, go ahead and add one to count. And let's run our test. So we're gonna pass some, but not all. So what ends up happening here is look at, the, look at this, this use case. We have one, two, one, two where it increases, right? And then it decreases. So you, you say, oh, okay. And then, so you, so you swap this out and you say, okay, ignore that. And then you say, is this number greater than this number? We didn't program logic for that. So how do we go about doing that? Well, uh, it's, it's, a, it's essentially, we have to nest it within our if statement here because we only care it's only in the instance in which it fails that this statement right here isn't enough. Now, we do that with another if statement, and this took me a while to figure out, but uh, once I kind of understood what I was going at, all the numbers started to make sense. So what we say is, is our current index that we're checking, in this case, uh, let's say two, is it less than or equal to this number? So is it less than or equal to two numbers back? Two numbers back because we're skipping that number that's behind it and we're checking one more because now our array is almost increasing, right? We're, 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 we've already calculated that we have that mistake. How does it affect our current sequence of events? So that's where this comes in. But that's not it. The next thing we have to check is is the current number that's increasing is the current is the current number in front of where we're checking less than or equal to the previous number because we need that as well so we'll add an add statement let's go ahead and open this up a little bit and we're saying hey <laughs> is this true as well where the current number 
plus one, current item, current index plus one, rather, is less than or equal to So if both these statements are true, we're just we return false because now we're done. We had we hit a second we hit a second statement in which in which this is now a an issue and we immediately return false because this is we already failed once, we fail in twice in here if we hit it. So go ahead and return false, run our tests, submit. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. We are we are done. Again, uh, what this might be a good example to run through some some uh, some whiteboarding of a nice big array and drawing it out to kind of visualize the numbers because I know we threw in a lot of different arrays here and a lot of different indexes and things like that. I, I encourage you to kind of draw it out on your own and, and uh, visualize it and you, you'll see the logic. But essentially, we're checking the values, count, keeping track of uh, how many issues there are and then we have a special use case here uh, to handle those unique inputs like one two one two but as always guys thank you so much for watching don't forget to comment like subscribe and share and join our facebook group code tech and caffeine if you want to support me at patreon.com slash coding tutorials 360 that would be dope i will see you guys in the next video bye hey guys thanks for watching the video Special thanks to our sponsors, Dev Mountain. If you're looking for a coding boot camp where tuition and housing is included, definitely check them out. Appreciate it, and I'll see you guys in the next video.